In this lesson, I'm going to show you a demonstration of how distributed tracing system works with Jagger. And what I've set up is a distributed tracing system called a Jagger. And this is running on top of Kubernetes with an application called as Istio. And what you see on the screen is the front end for the application. And I'm using this browser to generate some traffic by refreshing it every few seconds. And what you see next is how distributed sys uh, tracing can be useful for debugging application issues. Now tracing data is going to show me how long each of the requests took for a particular application and that is the end-to-end -end workflow. This is, remember, this is a microservices application which starts from product page, it connects to reviews, then it goes and talks to uh, the ratings and so on. And that's what you see here. So each of that application, how long it took for each of the request. And uh, this is spread over the time. So you, on the, you know, the, that axis is uh, for time. And uh, the second axis, Y axis is for the duration it took for each of that request. Most requests were handled in few mi milliseconds. Um, some of the requests took longer. We're going to look at some of these traces. So if we click on any of these, so it says eight spans, 23 spans, and so on. If we click on that, it shows you the complete trace data for that application. And this is really, really useful when you're trying to debug the application. And if you want to find out how long it took for each of the services, how long it took for sending the request, you'll see a couple of bars for each of that, each of the requests, so requests going to that and then actual processing in that end application as well. So you see both that data, which is really useful. And this can help you find out where the problem is, where the latency is, where the problem is in your service request, uh, the complete workflow. And uh, if you are using or running microservices, this is something I would highly, highly recommend uh, you to have because debugging the application related problems is the toughest part um, when you're trying to troubleshoot issues. And uh, this can be really very, very handy for you in uh, from that perspective. So you see here that it's taking like say nine, almost 10 seconds, 10 milliseconds here, almost uh, one and a half milliseconds here from reviews to rating and you see different hops here. So different spans. So basically this page when was loaded. So if you look at that product page, uh, it shows you info as well as reviews. So both of those are different requests and that's what you see here. So both are shown as different requests here. And each of that request uh, it has its own intervals. So you see those in the spans. If you see the, uh, there, if there was an error in a particular request while accessing reviews, there was a problem. So this is how you can debug. This is just an example of how easy it could be to debug certain issues. And this, these kind of issues are even difficult to find out because this is randomly failing on reviews. So if you look at the spans, it's not failing every time. If you look at the traces, uh, for some, it's working fine. For others, it is failing. And most of those errors are in the reviews uh, reviews page, basically. So this is really useful for understanding uh, not, only the, not only the errors, but also the latency issues in your application. So and then you can uh, optimize your applications and also you know, compare it with your previous um, results and find out how much uh, uh, latency you have uh, decreased and how efficient your application has become. And then you can select any of the other applications that you have. So in order for this to work though, you must have some changes added to your application because your application has to send that data uh, the, to the tracing system. And for that to work, you have to make certain changes in your application as well. Right, and this documentation talks about uh, how do you read those spans, how do you read the output, uh, how much time it is taking, and how do you debug things, and which service to select, and uh, how do you look at it, interpret it, and so on and so forth. So this is um, something I just showed you as, as well. Right, so you have the complete request, so the whole uh, span, and then uh, part of those which were made as uh, you know individual requests to microservices application. Could be HTTP or gRPC request, which could be in sync, uh, you know. Um, now, this is where the application 
related part comes in so you have to add the trace id span id parents uh, sample the and flags and so on so these headers need to be added and handled by the application in order for these traces to show up and that's what the example is so in this example this code was added to the python application this was a java application and that both of these application handle this if you add that so this might require a bit of a change in your application code as well so that you get the data but once you do that your life would become easier to understand and debug issues with your microservices and get a big picture overview of uh, how the request is traveling from the application to an another. And this is called as a distributed tracing.